Call of Duty has been met with overwhelming success since its launch of its Modern Warfare series, stepping on the hopes and dreams of its competitors like Medal of Honor. With a huge array of games standing at 36, Call of Duty has become a household name for better or for worse. As we progress down the Call of Duty path, we've encountered changes to the traditional formula. It's arguable that these changes veered off the original vision of the game, but has it been for better or for worse? Let's find out. And a quick note before we start, I've been streaming on twitch.tv forward slash bearded breakdown and many of you have come to support and shown love. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it and it's you guys who keep the content coming. So without further ado, here is your Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 review. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Call of Duty has maintained its status as a cinematic masterpiece ever since the sniping mission in the original Modern Warfare and it stands true today. Famous for its over-the-top set pieces using AC-130s to obliterate the opposition, doing small-scale house raids with tactical precision and immense sniper missions with our ghillie suits, Call of Duty permeates epic from all facets and this iteration is no different. Taking command of fan favourites, we get ever closer to photorealism. The characters feel living and breathing, and alongside the realistic weaponry, you'd be almost fooled into thinking that this was real life in certain cutscenes, and one thing you can say for sure is that Infinity Ward loved their detail. It's crazy how far all of this has come, and I remember using the M16 religiously in the original Modern Warfare. The detail in present day is astounding. You can tell that each weapon has a whole design team working on it, and the magazines which are often an afterthought have enough detail packed into them that you'd think it was an Unreal 5 tech demo. This is especially prevalent during reload mistakes where you can see the animation for an extended period of time. The surprising thing about all of this is that the level of detail is consistent across the board. The weapons, the environments and the character models, they all look amazing. And of course not everything is perfect with the occasional texture missing or blurry textures. But for the most part, especially in the campaign, the game looks tremendous. So back in 2014 when Advanced Warfare was released, I saw of Call of Duty. The wall jumping, the insane dashing and the double jumps felt all too much for me. It was a radical departure and as much as I appreciated the vision of the developers and the efforts towards innovation, I just couldn't get with the program. It felt bloated and unnecessary with killstreaks dominating the battlefield and along with the players that were buzzing around like flies and when they weren't buzzing around or zipping around like a four year old hopped up in sugar, they were camping in corners with advanced tech that would prop up that playstyle. Thankfully, the devs moved away from that vision and returned to a more grounded playstyle in Black Ops, although this was still tainted by heroes with specific abilities and advantages which obfuscated the vision of Call of Duty. Now, Call of Duty has always been plagued by bunny hopping, drop shotting and camping, so what does Modern Warfare 2 have to say this year? Well, although the remnants of those playstyles still exist, the devs have taken steps to move away from those things by decreasing TTK, which stands for time to kill, moving Ghost to the end of the leveling tree, and making the perk hard to use right off the bat, with several other little things. The guns feel great and the gunsmith system is amazing which allows for crazy customization for the plethora of weapons that exist. Each feel good as long as the netcode allows it to feel that way. Too often I'd pump a clip into someone for them to turn around and blast me with two bullets. It was a frustrating experience to say the least, and as a person I'm ultra competitive so if I lose to BS, the experience is twice as bad. There are multiple things at play here, with every Call of Duty there's a teething period where one must get used to the flow of combat and the weaponry. This is true for this iteration, with over 50 weapons to use and countless attachments, engagements can really differ depending on the weapon. I found myself gravitating towards a classic M4 as a way to gauge the pace of the game, which involves a lot of pre-aiming around corners to counter bunny hopping, and intimate map knowledge to mitigate a faster GTK. I noticed a couple of issues as I went about my business. One, the map pool isn't great this year, with most 6v6 maps feeling claustrophobic with little room to experiment. 
Alongside poor spawns and a fast TTK, the situation can quickly become dire. Skill-based matchmaking can also add fuel to the fire, and in my first few games I dominated the opposition, and it was a blast until it wasn't. I then found myself in lobbies of maxed out players as a level 20. I had clearly been placed in a higher tier than what my character was capable of, and I was at a clear disadvantage equipment wise. Throw in some streamers and some people giga chatting, and quickly what was an enjoyable experience became a stressful and frustrating one. I actually had to sit back and reevaluate my playstyle and life choices in order to quote unquote get good and fast. The level disadvantage was something that was out of my control as the matchmaking decides that. But what I could do was take a deeper look at the guns and map knowledge. And as it turns out, most attachments give a aim down sight penalty. So I'd been running five attachments with these ADS penalties and it led to about a 400 millisecond increase in aiming speeds. Once I had done my research and focus on ADS speed, my gameplay improved immensely and I found myself back at the top of the leaderboards, even amongst the sweaty players like myself. This highlights a significant problem with the attachment system, there needs to be some adjustments to the buffs and penalties in order to broaden the level of customization while maintaining competitive integrity. After adjusting my guns and the attachments, things improved tenfold, but as I mentioned before, there's an issue with the perk system. A fundamental change to how the perk system operates makes for a ripple effect in the rest of the multiplayer structure. With this iteration of Call of Duty, you earn your perks through gameplay, the better you do, the faster you unlock those equipped perks. This is all good on paper, but in practice it means that every time a UAV is up you get swarmed by 3-5 to five players at all different angles for the first half of the game. There is little to no counterplay with TTK being lowered. Can you counter this? Of course you can, but the odds are stacked against you. The amount of times I've run out of bullets and someone has come around the corner because the UAV is up and I don't have my ghost perk yet even though I'm at the top of the leaderboards is too damn high. To compound issues, you also don't unlock the best perks until much later on, so my naive level 20 ass was going against a level 55 with all their gear, and I'm stuck using the phantom perk package which contradicts its own playstyle by the nature of the first two perks, so either allow us to earn the perks faster, or rework the system because as it stands, if you do have any level of skill at the start of your career, you'll quickly face people who are already max level with better guns, equipment and perks. Ok, so the perk system needs a rework, skill based matchmaking can be your worst enemy and the attachment system needs some tuning. Oh, and uh, f*** this map. Piece of trash. Other than that, it's the best Call of Duty in my opinion. The invasion and ground war modes are so fun, taking what makes Battlefield great and putting it into Call of Duty. There are colossal vehicle battles and countless ways to approach locations, with expansive and diverse maps allowing for freedom of movement and tactics. I got to flex my sniping skills in this mode too, because you're no longer being jumped on constantly and you can breathe, think and plan, and when all else fails you can jump in a tank and blow shit up. It's nice to have a different pace and enjoy the epic nature of Call of Duty with all its killstreaks and explosions. Gunplay feels good with bunny hopping and drop shotting being nerfed and you can feel the realistic aspect of the military shooter coming back. Camping still exists and it will continue to plague shooters until the very last day on the planet. But other than that, the devs have made an active effort to improve how the gameplay feels moment to moment. Overall a much greater improvement than the previous iterations of the franchise. The customization is absolutely bonkers and there are a vast variety of weapons and maps when you take into account all the modes. The campaign remains one of the best cinematic experience which I'll talk about in writing and story and the spec ops mode, which is the co-op mode, can be fun when played with a coordinated team taking a tactical approach to clearing enemies. We get so much in this one game and with more to come in the future with the addition of battle passes and DLC, I look forward to it. I look forward to what the Call of Duty devs can do and hone in on what made this shooter great in the first place. Writing and story. As it stands, Modern Warfare 2 from 2009 and this year's iteration have completely different stories for the most part. Without going into too many spoilers, what I will say is that you can expect a cinematic experience that will pull on your heartstrings and will keep you hooked for most of the campaign. You can expect AC-130 gameplay, sniper missions and your usual gung-ho affairs. 
There were a couple of missions that really surprised me with the inventiveness of the map and level design. One standout involved us going undercover as a snitch, penetrating the inner circles of a cartel and witnessing someone incredible acting in the process. Speaking of acting, you can expect the extraordinary acting and motion capture that you all know from Call of Duty in this campaign. One character in particular had my pulse racing a little faster. You'll know who I'm talking about when you see them. You'll face moments in which you're pressed for time, and Call of Duty does a good job at keeping tempo, but then in a bizarre turn of events, you'll get some of these missions that completely destroy the momentum. One particular mission has you guiding fan favorite Ghost for a complex step-by-step -step procedure in order to get him from point A to point B. It seemed like a poor choice of mission if you ask me, considering what happened in the previous mission. Overall, a great campaign filled with memorable characters and tremendous acting with a sprinkle of momentum killers. What? How does it run? Well, the game had a disastrous launch by other game standards, but pretty typical for Call of Duty to be honest. Server outages, shoddy netcode, network issues, and a problem with the ping system which allows you to see a player for the rest of the game after you've killed them. That last one was promptly removed with a colossal amount of traffic and the size of the game, there are bound to be some issues. But as my memory would have it, it seems like this is one of the better disastrous launches. Luckily for Call of Duty, they are backed by Activision and now Microsoft. So you can bet your gold camo M4s that they have a squad of people working on these issues relentlessly to iron out the experience before Warzone 2 and the launch of the Battle Pass for Season 1. Performance can also be an issue in the campaign specifically, with frame drops and rubber banding in certain sequences, especially on load up. Campaign missions restarted at a checkpoint will have the game load in ahead of you to a ridiculous degree for you then to move at the same speed, which results in gameplay that first freezes and then fast forwards to catch up to the rest of the shenanigans, which can lead to broken sequences and deaths. Multiplayer though, for the most part, seems to be a bug free experience other than the ping issue I mentioned which has been removed very swiftly, and you'll have a couple of network issues that still remain in netcode problems resulting in unfair deaths. This hinders what otherwise is a stellar multiplayer experience. Tweaking your settings in Call of Duty is like a delicate ballet. Everything works in tandem, so if one thing fails, everything else fails too. I can't stress this enough, test your rig and see what it's capable of running. If you're running a low end rig, you can expect the game to be quite taxing, especially if you're wanting better graphic fidelity. Things like shadows, depth of field, ambient occlusion and textures will make games look great but at the same time they can make it look like you're running a slideshow without a good setup. Digital Foundry always offer really good information on what would be the most intensive settings. So I'd refer to that to get an in-depth look at which settings you can disable to improve performance. What's this? This is the immediate future. Step away from the gate. What? You heard me. Are you crazy? This is my base. Not a base. This is a sizable covert facility. And I admire it. So I'm taking it. You boys have been relieved. Thank you for your service. No, 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 no. I don't take orders from you. Didn't Valeria say that? Now that makes me wonder what else I don't know about your affiliation with the drug lord. What the fuck did you just say to me, Bendel? You're a lying grace. Don't do that. Don't do that. No one needs to get hurt here. Are you threatening us, soldier? Sound design. Battlefield, is that you? Battlefield who once held the title for the best sound design in a shooter ever? 
No, not anymore. Call of Duty has snatched a title from Battlefield's Cold Dead Fingers. It's gone above and beyond in its sound design, with bullets whizzing past your head. With such audio accuracy that my body instinctively ducked whenever a 50 caliber bullet came within inches of my head. Running away from an airstrike that sounds thunderous as it surrounds you gives you this sense of immersion. Weapons realistically rattle away as you're shooting them with changes depending on the indoor or outdoor environments. Hell, it even sounds different depending on the surface you're shooting on, be it wood or cement. These small touches add to the experience, which previously Battlefield was known for, but after 2042, Call of Duty really did learn from its competitor. Although for some reason, in certain instances, I can't hear footsteps when people are behind me, and I'm still investigating this issue because multiple people have made similar posts and have had the same problem. So it appears to be a widespread issue with the sound design in certain environments. Voice acting has always been a strong suit of Call of Duty and it remains so in this year's iteration. You can still expect the same old voice lines in multiplayer though as you hear grenade for the 100th time, but you'll have red hot bullets zipping past you while explosions are happening all around. Your character's frantic breathing quickening as they are close to death and the sound of your M4 bullets hitting their target as the enemy's lifeless body hits the floor with a satisfying thud and as the bombers close in overhead and your screen shakes you'll feel invigorated and alive in this virtual world and ladies and gentlemen this is the result of excellent work on behalf of the sound engineering team and there you have it call of duty modern warfare 2 it's not without its issues but as it stands it is the best call of duty to date and it earns its place as a truly excellent title thanks for tuning in and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content you can catch me on twitch.tv forward slash bearded breakdown if you want to come and say hi otherwise i'll see you for the next review bye